in this lesson, we'll be solving another problem that is a continuous growth model. In this case, our growth is doing the opposite way, meaning decreasing, right? Well, it doesn't make sense to say growth is doing in reverse. But anyway, let's say now we're dealing with the decrease in quantity. So this is still a continuous model problem because we are interested in some changes that will happen over time, right? So the first, the statement says, we are asked to model how radium decays over time due to loss of alpha particles. We are told that the rate of decrease of mass is proportional to the mass at time t. So this is an important statement, right? The mass of radium is given by m of t, and the rate constant is k. So now, before we even look at what the quotient says, by reading this, we know that the radium is decreasing, is decaying, right? And the rate is decreasing. Now, our constant in this case is going to be negative k. Okay, k is a positive number, but there will be a negative sign before it to show that we are dealing with a rate of decrease. Now, they say to you that the rate, the rate of what? The rate of change of mass. Right, so this is what we have. They say the rate of decrease of the mass is proportional to what? To its mass at time t. So it's proportional to k multiplied by m. But what do we know about the, we need a negative sign here because we are dealing with um, the a rate of decrease. So it's a decay, okay? So now this is what we have so far. So we know that m is the same as m of t. So m is a function of time. The change in mass happens over time. Now what we can do is we can, okay, let's remove this k for now. Let's say negative m. So they are saying that the mass, the rate of change of mass is proportional to m, right? Remember when we put the proportionality constant, this um, this 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 symbol here, you don't put k. But when we remove this symbol, we then replace it with kt. Now we can say that dm dt is equal to, but it's negative k then multiplied by m. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So remember, this is the, what our relationship is saying. It's saying that the rate of decrease, which is this one, is proportional to its mass at time t. We know that m is a function of t, so you can just write m as m of t if you want. Okay? So these statements, they mean the same thing because we have stated that m is m of t. So it's much more easier to work with this differential equation because we can see till that m and m. It's much easier when you separate variables. So now let's see what we have. So now what we have is dm dt is equal to negative km. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide both sides by m. Okay. The first step is we need to cross multiply. We can do that. So we can say that dm is equal to negative km dt. Then now you can see clearly that we can divide both sides by m. Now I've got 1 over m dm is equal to negative k dt, right? So now I can integrate both sides. If I do that, the integral of 1 over a variable is going to be lean of m. So this is what we have, right? So it's lean of m, where m must be strictly a positive number because we can't evaluate the lean of a negative number. And on the left side, negative k is a constant, so I pull it out. If I integrate dt, I get t, then plus some constant, which I can call a. Okay, this is what we have. And then now we know what we're going to do, right? We're going to ex exponentiate both sides so that we get rid of the lean. We want to harvest this m. Now, if I do that, I'm going to have m, which is a function of t, is equal to. I'm going to split this into e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of negative kt. So we didn't even follow what the questions are saying. Um, we just went straight into answering. But OK. So the second question wanted us to write the, the relationship, OK? The decrease of mass 
of radium over time. As a differential equation, this is what we have over here. So after writing this, already you've got three points. And then now solving this differential equation, then you now get eight points. So, you know, when you are in the mood for something, you don't even check the question, you just go straight to it. So, a constant before the constant is another constant, which I can just replace it with a constant B multiplied by E to the power of negative KT. Okay, so now I've got, I've solved my, my differential equation is M of T is equal to B E to the negative KT. But are we done? Well, they say to you, taking into account initial conditions. Even if they don't tell you, always take into account initial conditions. Because if someone comes and asks you what is this B, you won't really know what this B is. So what you can, what you can say is that the, uh, the mass at T equal to zero is equal to M naught. Okay, so I'm going to replace where I see M of T, I'm going to, and where I see T, I'm going to put zero. Now if I do that, I'm gonna have M naught is equal to B E, to the power of zero t, which is just equal to b. Now I can check this b, which is equal to m naught, and I put it in this different in this solution over here. So what I end up with, I end up with m of t is equal to m o e to the power of negative k t. So this is how our model looks like. Okay. So this is what we have. So always remember that when you're dealing with degrees, you have to put negative t, okay? And then um, the m naught over here will represent some initial conditions. Let's say they tell you what is the, what was the initial mass, right? So now let's say the initial mass of this thing was um, 200, okay? So let's do that, just for illustration purpose. Okay, so let's write it over here. I'm just gonna clear some of the things, okay? Okay, so now we know that we have this. I'm gonna pull it up a bit. Now, if the initial mass, which is M naught, was 200 kg, and they tell us what is the time, they want to know how much uh, we're gonna have after some duration 20. Let's say um, hours, okay? And let's say the K was 0 0.0423. So this, this just a made up, these are just made up numbers, okay? Just for the sake of illustrating. So what you will say is that the mass at 20 is equal to 200, right? Multiplied by E to the power of negative 0 0.0423 and multiplied by 20. Then this, whatever you get here, will give you the actual mass which we are going to have. So now let's compute that and see what we get. So we get one, two, three, comma, two, six. So because of this negative, we say that the mass is decreasing. That is why you see that at, at, at t equals to zero, the mass was 200, but now at t equal to 20, the mass is now 123,26 kilograms. So this is how you can apply this model. Whenever you hear, you hear them talking about radioactive decay, then just know, or when they talk about half-life, just know that strength must be negative. Thank you for watching.